Hello everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome and I greet you all. How have you been and how is it going? Last week we talked about uh, sloth and uh, anger. So and uh, there some persons came up on my YouTube channel. There's a person that was asked by her sister there she said, uh, in case a man is not sloth, hardworking, who is earning money, he has money, everything is coming on well. But he keeps on giving the excuses that there's no money, no business, and stuff like that, and keep lying to his or her partner. So what would you do about that? So my response to that would be that, remember last time we talked about responsibility, that a man is to be responsible to provide for his family, provide for the needs of the family. And we made a reference to the Bible in First Timothy chapter 5, number 8, that if a man fails to perform his duty, providing for the family, that the man is worse than an unbeliever, that he has denied the faith. So he, it is his sole responsibility to provide for, for, man, for the family, for the family. But you as a lady, as a partner, should be also ready to support that man. You know what I mean? Do you also be, you need to be responsible. Do not rely on him for everything, that he has to provide everything in the house. Yes, he is the head, he has to provide, but you are to support him in case he's not, he's lagging behind. But in this case, he said the man has the money, but he is failing. He deliberately, let me use that word, decided not to. Be responsible in the family. I give you an example of what movie I watch. The man will always complain there's no money, there's no money, so he doesn't leave money in the house and he will go home and regret it. So he came back one day, one night, and he was ready to eat, and the wife just brought out the bowl. When he washed his hand, he opened the bowl, the bar was empty, the bowl of soup was also empty, and I said, Oh, yeah, eat now. The money you left, so he, he, not, he left nothing, so you're not gonna eat nothing. Remember? NCNC, no contribution, no consumption. So I leave you to figure that out with yourself. No contribution, no consumption. Maybe you use that for him. Maybe he will come back to his senses and be responsible in his duties as a man. So today we want to talk about envy and pride. To conclude the canker worm, we'll be talking about all this while. Envy and pride. So we we'll start with envy. So say, envy is the intense desire. What do we mean by intense? Intense is that it, it is it is strong strong the intense desire to have an item that someone else possesses ojukokoro anyuku that's what we call it in my dialect back home in nigeria in yoruba it's ojukokoro in Igbo language say anyuku and that's envy you are eyeing other people's property you are eyeing what they are wearing you are eyeing what the kind of phone they are using you are eyeing the kind of shoes they are putting on Eyeing another man's another 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 another, another man's woman, eyeing another man another, another another woman's a man. Envy, and in book of Exodus chapter twenty, the Bible puts it there when you talk about the tenth commandments. He said, "Do thou shall not have a covetousness, to avoid it, of other property." property. When we envy sets in, anger will come, hatred will come. And then you can do anything to your fellow human being in order to achieve that what you want. You are envious of his position in the office. You are envious of her position in the family. You are envious of your, your, of, of your, of your friend's relationship. That's why I will tell you at this juncture, try as much as you can. We will talk about it in some other time. When we, do, we have a topic, we will talk about your relationship is your business. So we will talk about, we are going to make references to that when it comes. But for now, we will talk about envy. You are envious of people. Because that envy will lead you to things that you wouldn't want to do. Because when you are envious of all those people things, you want to get that which they want, which you cannot afford at that time. So you end up doing that which you are not supposed to do as a child of God in the first place. You end up dipping your hands into things to be able to achieve that iPhone in which you want. You are in relationship as a lady. Your man couldn't afford to give you an iPhone, but there's a man who is there to give you an iPhone. Then you went to that man in the hotel, but meanwhile, you are in relationship and you claim to love him. Yo, you want to get a job. They ask you to do something that abominable to get a job because of your, you are envious of your brother or your friend who is in that position and you want to knock him off. So you could do anything to get rid of him so that you can take that position. Envy destroys. Envy is not a healthy, you know, it, 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 it's, it's a vice that destroys your relationship. And the book of Proverbs chapter 14 verse 30 says, A son heart, I will use a son heart, that is, a son that is free from envy, is life to the body. It gives life to the body, but the heart that is full of envy is rottenness to the bones. 
Proverbs chapter 14, verse number 30 says there. Avoid envy. Be satisfied with whatever you have. Be satisfied with him. Be satisfied with her. Whatever he offers you, be okay with it. Whatever she offers you, be okay with it, brother. Do not, remember we talked about comparison. That when you begin to compare, that is when envy, envy that, is, that is what envy brought in, brings in, so to say. Be contented. Be satisfied. And then you'll be able to move on in your relationship. And your relationship will be much more better than what you think. But when envy sets in, my brother, my sister, it's going to crumble. I can I will leave you to other passages in, in the Bible, like Book of Job, chapter 5, verse number 2, Proverbs 24, 19 to 20, and Galatians chapter 5, verse number 26. For the paracetamol to envy is kindness. It cures envy completely. Be kind. Once you are kind, you'll be able to know the spirit of the spirit of satisfaction will come to you. Then you'll be able to be content with whatever you have. And you'll be content with your man. You'll be able to fall along with your woman and everything will go in the way you planned it to go. Next one we'll talk about is pride. Hmm. That is the greatest of them all. All other six we talked about are subsumed, subsumed, subsumed in pride. Because pride is the is the chief of them all. Because when someone is proud, every other thing is meaningless. So he says pride is an excessive view of oneself without regard for others. You have no respect for anybody. Be it your partner, be it your man or woman, be it anybody, be it your friend in office. You are full of yourself. You only talk about yourself. Your own idea is the best. Your own view is the best. Whatever you say it should be that which should be accepted. And every other thing that comes after it should be nonsense should be eradicated pride you remember in the gospel of luke chapter number 18 verse 10 to 14 there the lord told us a parable of the two men who went into the temple to pray the first man went in there and said lord have mercy on me a sinner and the bible tells us that the man went away being forgiven because he humbled himself he remembered his nothingness. He remembered his worthlessness. And he was healed. But the other man went there and said, Lord, you know, I pay my tithe regularly. I speak in tongues. I pray prayer. I do this. I do that. I make sure I do that, whatever I do as a Christian. But we were told that he never went home and tried with God because he went home the way he came because he was proud. He was full of himself. Pride goes before it falls, they say passages in book of Jeremiah chapter number 9 verse number 23 to 24 says let not the mighty man boast of his might do not boast of whatever you have because whatever you have been given to this has been given unto you by God himself whatever you have whatever money you have you might think that you you are doing better than your man or you are doing better than your woman and you think everything every 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 authority should come from you whatever you say in the home should be the last and nobody should question your authority who are you that's pride. Should be able to come together, reason together. A tree can never make a forest. You can never stand on your own as a man. You can never stand on your own as a woman. And you think you can do it on your own? No way. Do not be full of yourself. Be humble. Humble yourself with that humility and you see that everything will go well in your relationship. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 13, much about pride as well. Romans 12, 16 talks about it. Galatians 6, 3 talks about pride as well. The parasitic all for pride, you all know, is humility. Humility, I will say, leave this to you. Humility cures pride by removing one's ego and boastfulness. It's supposed to be we before me. Put others before yourself. Think of others before you. Before you do anything, think about others. Think about him. Think about her. Say, so put others in your shoes before you act. So, humility cures pride by removing one's ego and boastfulness. Therefore, allowing the attitude of service, you'll be able to be ready to serve. And that is what our Lord did. He humbled himself. And all the prophets, both in the Muslim and the Christian, they humbled themselves to serve. And that is why we still reverence them today. We still, our Lord Jesus Christ, look at him today. He humbled, he got that in Philippians 2, when he said, though he was in the form of God, Jesus did not count equality with God a thing to be grabbed. He said, he, did what? he humbled himself and took the nature of a man. And he died. And what kind of death? A shameful death. A death on the cross. 
Humility sets in there. You also need to be humble in your relationship. And the word sorry should not be far from your mouth when you offer, offend him, when you offend her. A contract heart. Look at the man who said, he said, Lord, I'm sorry. Have mercy on me. And the Lord forgave him. But the other one who says, no way. He went away the same way he came. So, I will leave you with this story. There was a group of people who were making a journey. And they got stuck in a bridge. And they, they, because the bus couldn't move. They tried all they could do to move the bus, but they couldn't. So a little child came. He said, Lord, why not let's, let's reduce, he used the word, reduce the tire that is deflating the tire a little bit. They were looking at him, what is this bomber? What does he know? They belittled him that he has no idea. So one man said, why not give this, give it a thought? Let us do what the boy say, says. And they deflated the tires and the boss, and they said, okay, let everybody come down as the boss has directed. And they moved. And the boss was able to go through so you and I, every one of us in our relationship, whatever we do, we need a little deflation to allow things go through. And with that deflation, we'll be able to make it in life. So I'll leave you with that. And I want to pray that as this period of Lent for Christian and Brothers comes to an end and Easter is coming, we pray that as sacrifices, the Lord will accept it. And for our Muslim brothers and sisters who have just started the Ramadan period, I pray that all your sacrifices and thanksgiving and the fasting, the Lord God Almighty will bless them. So i leave you with that now. Till next week, I'm going to see you. Until then, peace be with you. Thank you.